Welcome to Call of the Wild, the Angler, and as always, a huge thank you to Expansive Worlds for this opportunity. I am super excited to get in here and try this game, Trout. Or out. Yeah, out. Now, for anybody that I didn't just scare away with that awful pun, what I have done for the better part of the last 90 minutes is go ahead and do the tutorial and the first mission, which basically takes you around the entire reserve. And what that's left me with is approximately 1,500 credits and almost halfway to level 10. I'm not sure why it's displayed this way, but we are level 9 and making progress towards level 10. That basically means, without having to do any fishing outside of the tutorial, all that exploration has gotten us fairly far into the game, and I think what that is indicative of is the developers actually placing a pretty big emphasis on the exploration aspect of the game, but all that out of the way, I'm sure you guys are most looking forward to going out and doing some fishing, so that is exactly what we're going to do. It is definitely starting to get a little bit dark out due to all the time we spent on the exploration of the map, but I wanted to come up here to the tutorial pond, try to catch at least one fish with the beginner rod, and then we'll go back and try to buy some better stuff. So we can adjust our depth with the mouse scroll wheel, and then casting is super simple. We just left click, pull the mouse back, and then push the mouse forward and release to cast. I also like the line tension physics. You can see there's a little bit of looseness in the line down by the reel. We can just reel a little bit and get the tension on the line. So now we'll see if any fish want to cooperate here before dark. That was interesting. We just lost like all of our attention. I don't know if a fish was messing with it or not. We do indeed, and hard to say what it is, but it looks like, at least based on what I remember from the tutorial, probably a little bit bigger than that, but ooh, we gotta be careful not to break our line. It seems to be somewhere in the middle, like bigger than the tutorial fish, but not quite the super easy to bring in ones. I don't like when the tension is completely gone either. He is not wanting to give up, but I'm only going to get into about 3.7, 3.6 meters to bring him in, and got a rainbow trout. Perfect, considering my awful joke at the beginning. So I, that is a lot of credits for whatever we just did. Well, I'm going to say that maybe exploration and fishing can both be extremely lucrative in terms of the credits. That is just a bronze, by the way, and you can, before we leave the screen, toggle the UI and take a picture. So, lighting isn't great, but we'll go with that. We can bring this back. I don't know what these numbers mean just yet. That'll have to be figured out in due time. But we'll release that and hopefully go back and try to figure out how to rest until morning. But let's actually see. We're at just over 1,500 credits. We are now at 1,572. That certainly seemed to show earning way more credits than it would appear now. Well, apparently one way to do it is to just exit the game and come back in. So I guess that'll work for now. By the way, interesting uh, signage they have here, but I went ahead and bought some other equipment. I honestly have no idea if they're good decisions or not, but I just figured we'd go all out and get the Vizier. We have the Optic Reel, which is one of the more expensive ones. We have six kilogram strength monofilament, and I went ahead and grabbed a spinnerbait. So we're gonna see if this is gonna work. There was a spot that I really wanted to go and check that we found while exploring. I think it was up here somewhere in the east side of the map. Actually, it might've been this little pond down in here. So we can't fast travel straight to there, but we can go to this point of interest. So we'll head out from here and see if we can catch anything in there. By the way, one of the cooler looking places up here where you can basically see over the entire map. It's really, really cool. I just kind of liked how this was a nice little isolated pond that I thought maybe would be good for starting out. So I actually went through the entire handbook over here. If we go into that and click on the different fish, you can see the bait and lore preferences. And interestingly enough, nothing, I've clicked on all of them, has a spinning bait as a lore preference. So we'll see how this goes, but the method for this is just simply constant, so I think all we gotta do is retrieve. I wonder how that works. I have not had any of that stuff, although I guess we're officially like in that constant mode now. So I think we're good. We'll see if any of the fish want to cooperate. There is a golden trout, maybe, that seems to be following this. We'll see if he wants to actually go ahead and hit it. But I like how the 
different methods work. There we go. Cool deal. So I'll explain that a little bit more in a minute when we're done fighting this guy, but that actually is pretty cool. I'm glad that we were able to, to make it work. Gotta make sure that we don't end up losing him, because having no tension on the line is basically just as bad as having full tension. But you can see this rod is handling this fish a whole lot better than the previous rod was handling the previous fish. There we go. I don't even know what it was. It is a golden trout. A silver golden trout, in fact, which is uh, a little bit interesting. How do I uh, equip the... Maybe that's in our backpack. So I really dislike how the character looks, so I bought a hat and sunglasses with some of our credits as well. Clearly that needs to be equipped, but not too bad. Like I said, I want to go over the different methods you have of fishing a little bit. Let's see if I can figure out the uh, the equipment real quick. And I cannot, so I don't know. Maybe we got to do that back at the outpost. We'll look into that in a little bit, but I did notice in here we've got a biggest catch record, which of course is our golden trout, and a true score record. And the true score for that trout was 2012, so I'm not sure how that's calculated, but I'm intrigued to find out more about that. Now, as I said, I wanted to talk about the different methods of fishing here real quick. So if we get the correct rod, the first thing you'll notice is we can cast farther with this rod and reel combination out to about 31 meters. And then when we start reeling, you first see in the bottom right that it says jigging, then stop and go, and then goes to the constant. Now, if we were jigging and we start to pop the rod up in the air a little bit every, I don't know how often yet, but every so often, we'll be twitching or jigging. There's different methods that we can go with. And I like that the game kind of lets you know that you're doing that. I'm assuming we're going to be wanting to be a little more consistent to properly do it. I haven't tried it yet, so I'm not sure, but we're at least twitching and jigging relatively consistently. So I like that the game basically tells you what method you're actually doing properly so that you're not wasting your time if you're doing it improperly. The other thing is, if you look in the bottom left, we can control both our drag percentage with the Z and X keys and the speed that we're reeling with with the mouse scroll wheel. So I think we caught that golden trout on one. There actually is a fish down in there. So while we're here, I think he is going to hit it. And it looks to be a different kind of fish. This one is not going to take much to get in, but that is a mountain white fish. I recognize that from the steam page. Another silver. You know, I wasn't prepared to be excited about catching fish to this degree. I've attempted fishing games in the past, and I, they've just not been my thing. But something about this has actually started to grow on me as we've caught more fish. So it's kind of annoying me that I don't have the equipment that we bought. Level 10, by the way. Got some credits. I want to go see if I can figure that out real quick before we continue. That makes a little more sense. So if we go back out here, we're going to talk to the <laughs> storekeeper. Go to customization, and now we can actually change the uh, different accessories and stuff from here. So we have the sunglasses and a hat, and uh, hopefully that'll help a little bit with some of the screenshots. So that's all I wanted to do. We'll go back up to that spot. So I know it's minor, but it's kind of bugging me that our shadow doesn't have the shadow of the hat that we're wearing. I kind of hope that can be addressed down the line, but there is certainly a golden trout sitting right there, and we'll just continue with this method. I kind of like it. I'm intrigued that maybe we'll do it by the end of this video. I want to mess with maybe the, the jigging methods or twitching. I was having a hard time getting to keep one consistent, but I think it might be fun to try to play with some of the other fishing methods and see how we do. I sort of wish that maybe we couldn't see when a fish is going for our lure because we can see that golden trout is going to hit it. I'd like a little more surprise when it happens because we know anytime in the next couple of seconds we're going to get a strike from that golden trout, at least if things are as we had it before. I'll even slow down the retrieve just a little bit. I mean, we can see he's following it. Maybe kind of checking it out, unsure if he wants to actually hit it. We'll slow down even further here, just to see if maybe that helps. There we go. Cool. So, for some reason I couldn't remember where I needed to look, but uh, I will say, I'm not really great with knowing what direction to, to hold the rod in, by the way. I don't know if that matters too much here, but the rod and reel combo we have are probably, if anything, a little bit much for golden trout of this size. But I mean, it seems to work well enough. This one, and that actually looks a lot better with the character model, I think, 
This one was a silver again at 1.98 kg. Cool thing here too, they let you know, I assume if it's your personal best, by how much. So this one is 1.98 kg, the last was 1.92, an increase of 0.06 and an increase of 0.01 meters on that. So I think I figured this stuff out. It's the level of mastery of those particular pieces of equipment. I don't know if they make you more likely to catch fish when you do have a higher percentage, but I believe that's what it actually means. We will go ahead and actually screenshot this now with our new uh, player model and equipment. We'll go ahead and let that go. And I'll go into our backpack here just to show you what I'm talking about with all that. So in the backpack section, if we click on the new rod, you can see we have a mastery percentage of 19% already. If we go into the reels, we have a 20% mastery on that. And I think if we go to the spinnerbait, 20% mastery on that as well. What's interesting, by the way, I bought this one. This one just came with it. Not sure if it would make any difference as to the fish that we're catching. Another thing, we know that like temperature and conditions and stuff like that are meant to affect the fishing. I, I don't know how to know what the conditions are. I don't see anywhere that tells us like a temperature or anything like that. I didn't see anything in the tutorial that would let us know. I'm not sure where to be looking for that information, but I guess if there's a plus, it's that we haven't struggled to catch fish so far. It seems to me like the golden trout like the slower retrieval better. They definitely seem to go and approach the lure a lot more quickly when we do that. So this also sort of bugs me. I wish that the rod was just doing its own thing. The camera follows the rod and I'd like to be able to keep a better eye on the fish, which I think could let me make decisions as to what direction to move the rod in. It works just fine as is, but I kind of wish that I was in control of the camera better. There's a gold golden trout, which is a lot more appropriate at 2.75 kg. Nice fish. Another thing that I would like, because we have the ability to take screenshots, I don't think we can move this around. It's just kind of as is. I'd love to be able to move the camera position and if we could move our character, you know, to be a little more in the sunlight, that would be nice. Now, obviously we can stand in the sun if we want to be in a good position for a photo after catching a fish, but sometimes you gotta stand in a particular spot to actually cast to where the fish are. So I'm liking this. I like that it's actually not too terribly difficult to know what method of fishing you're performing. Because like I said, and as we saw, it can be tough to continuously have the jigging or twitching method working. So I like that they kind of help you out there. So hopefully at least one more golden trout if we can. And I believe there is one following our spinnerbait here. And then I want to go and try some other stuff. So if he decides to bite, and honestly, the closer we get to the shore, the better in terms of the bite. I don't think this one's very big, at least from what I could tell. I'm not sure how much you can tell from just looking in the water, but I mean, it doesn't seem to be able to pull any harder than anything that we've had in the past, so we'll just keep on working it in. I don't know, I would like the, the pumping technique, but I'm a little worried that we're gonna end up losing it. Actually, that made it look pretty big. It is a gold. You know what? Maybe this is over your last fish, because didn't we have one that was 2.6-ish kg anyway? It does say it's the new best rank, but I don't think it was the biggest by that much. So maybe there's something off about that. I, I don't know. But a little more in the sun. We'll take one more quick little screenshot of that golden trout. And now we'll go and try some other methods. I like the idea of going with a popper here and... Fire Tiger is one of my favorite uh, colors. Now, they don't actually list the color, but that is most certainly what that is. So we're going to buy that. And I think what we may attempt, and I'm not sure if this is the greatest idea, we're going to go and take a boat. And I might actually say this handles better than the Jeep, which is a plus. The Jeep can be a little bit odd to operate, but let's just try something here. I don't know how much fish actually take into account trying to be in cover, but... This may have some fish at it. So we're now equipped with our popper and we can see a couple of looks like largemouth swimming around out there. So we know the stop and go technique can work. That was what I was kind of practicing with at the last spot. So it seems like kind of once per bar fill, although that didn't do quite as I wanted, stopping and then starting to retrieve again seems to work. 
Can I actually slow down on how that's working? And that seemed to mess us up, but that little guy's at least following it. We're a little close to the boat. Look at the size of that fish that just came up. I don't know if we caused that. We're so close to the boat, I'm worried that we're not going to be able to... Yeah, that, that's kind of what I thought was going to happen. And he was attracted. You can see he just turned and went the other way as soon as we had to retrieve that. The stop and go technique seems to be the move. Let's actually ignore that small fish out there. We'll try to get in a little bit behind him. Give us some room. Go back down to one speed like we were. Can we actually catch that guy? I, I don't know if this rod can even do it. That will remain to be seen. He's kind of heading back down at the moment, but he came up originally from doing this, so we'll keep working on it. Okay, don't know if that's him or not, but I was not ready for that. I can't see what it might be, but it's relatively close to the boat. That actually looked like a nice fish. The tension's not that bad, so if that's him, and it, it looks like a good one, this rod is more than capable on bass. That's a nice fish. A good gold. 3.47 kg. I wonder, can we see what diamond and stuff is? I'm not sure how to look, but there's our, our popper just really doing a lot of work for us in getting that guy. A lot of mastery increasing there as well. That was pretty cool. I totally was not prepared for that strike, and you may recall I mentioned, I didn't like that I could see the golden trout in that last spot and knew when a strike was going to happen. That was entirely unexpected, and I just kind of wish I knew if that was the big one or not. It may have been because there were two kind of nice ones. The way bigger one, though, was very obvious. What is that? A catfish, I think? I don't imagine that'll hit this, but I mean, we can try. He certainly does not seem interested. Now, there is something else big to the right of that, and it's within casting range, so we might try it. We'll just actually go ahead and, and bring this in quick. That is... what is that? A pike, maybe? It almost has to be. Don't know if he'll hit it, but I could definitely see it happening, so let's get in closer to him before we start working the stop and go technique. He's kind of heading towards it. I don't know, again, if we're prepared for stuff like this, but I think that's the fish that we have on. And he is, this time, you can see, he's just pulling line out. So rather than reel, what we want to do is at least keep tension on the line, but let him run, let him tire himself out, and then we'll start to work him back in. So again, got to keep our tension on the line, but we might be able to make this work. I mean, the rod seems capable. But I don't like that he's doing a really good job of just getting slack in the line to where he could get unhooked. But you can kind of see here, when you can see where the fish is at, it's pretty easy to make a determination as to where the rod needs to be to keep tension on the on the line. But I feel like because the camera follows the rod... Okay. Why... why I don't know what just changed. Are we, oh, we're at the max of our, our line, maybe? Yeah, I think so. Okay, we can't move the boat, so... This will be interesting. Don't know if we can make this work. Maybe? Man, that's not good. Yep. <laughs> Do we lose our lure when that happens? I don't think. Probably we should, but... I mean, at least we get to keep working with it. So, maybe we should stick to looking for some fish that we can handle a little bit better for now. But, uh... That's something I'm looking forward to, maybe if we get slightly better equipment or just learn a little bit better what to do in those situations. It looks to be getting kind of late once again, and there's this other pond up by where we caught the golden trout earlier, just a little bit to the southwest, and I wanted to try it out, see if there's anything up in here, and we're going back to the spinnerbait to do that, at least for now, assuming there could be some of these same fish species around, and I thought that it said, actually, on this one when we discovered it. Rainbow Trout, Mountain Whitefish, and Golden Trout. So I want to catch a better Rainbow Trout, and I wouldn't be too shocked if we could do that from here. Seems to be a fish right out in that area, so we'll give it a try. I mean, no complaints, but it looks like we have a Golden Trout interested once again, so looks like that's going to be what we're bringing in first. We might actually go around to the other side then. Because I had a hard time actually casting into there, due to the fact that we were apparently casting too far. That guy, though, looks to be a little below average, a silver this time. Working on our mastery of that equipment, and I think this one we will just go ahead and throw right back. 
So let's maybe try from a different angle, because we couldn't... That's probably not going to work. We couldn't actually get to where that initial little splash that we saw was. Probably from here we can. I like that. That's the second time we had one surface right over here along the shore, so let's go with that. There is a good-sized, I think, golden trout again. Just right by the shore here. It's so interesting. If you get to the right spot, it can be really, really effective, but... Yeah. Well. <laughs> There's our first crash. Approximately four hours in. That's kind of unfortunate. That looked like a nice fish. So now, of course, we are back in pretty much broad daylight. And despite that fact, we are going to try to catch one more fish, as there is a good one out there again. And honestly, that could be the same fish. I, I don't know how that works, but we'll try to get him in here. Again, I just wish I could get to be able to see the fish when I'm trying to, you know, to, to decide where the rod needs to be to keep the most tension on it. I don't think there's a way to, to do that. This guy is making it more difficult, though, and if I could actually watch what's going on, that may help, but I think we're going to get him. That's a rainbow trout, so actually, worked out a lot better this time that we get to bring this guy in. He is a silver. Every rod, reel, bait, lore, and soft plastic can be mastered, so we must have just mastered something. A piece of gear is mastered when it has earned enough mastery points. Mastery points are earned by successfully catching a fish with that piece of gear. Mastering a piece of gear will grant you XP, so perhaps it is just that. Either way, pretty nice rainbow. Starting and ending, actually, with a rainbow, so uh, I would say that is pretty appropriate. There, there could be a little more life, I guess, in the fish models. They, they kind of, in a weird way, they remind me of mounted fish. They just sort of lack a little bit of life in the eyes or something. I don't know how to describe it. But I do like that we can at least take screenshots. Again, if we could sort of change the camera position and stuff, that would be nice. But a pretty good first fishing trip. Level 14. Apparently twice. It's going to be interesting to see how the level system works in this game. Because it seems you can progress pretty quickly. But we'll head over here to this spot with the really good view and just kind of... You know, first thoughts, first reactions to this. Having played for close to four hours now, the first 90 minutes has been just sort of driving around in the vehicle. Does it perfectly simulate real life fishing? Obviously not. But there are at least moments where you really do feel like it's real fishing. The big largemouth, for instance, when I didn't know it was about to bite, that surprise strike, that, it, it just felt realistic when you really can't see the fish. And I've done plenty of fishing where I can see if the fish is going to bite, like we had there with that rainbow trout. That is a thing as well. But I definitely do prefer the unknown aspect. And that just, you never know when the fish is going to bite. That definitely was a better simulation for me. But I do like it. I really didn't expect to like it as much as I do. When I first got in, I wasn't sure what I thought of it, but... It really has grown on me, and I'm looking forward to going out here and doing some more fishing in the coming days. Not only that, we are going to be live streaming this game over on Twitch at 1 p.m. Eastern, so if you want to come and check it out, if you have any questions, uh, we can answer them live and see what you guys think of the game in a live stream sense, rather than having some of the maybe monotony and stuff edited out. And uh, like I said, I'm actually pretty excited to see where this goes. I'm excited to do a little bit of combining the two games, doing some hunting and fishing in the same video or stream. And uh, I think there's a lot of potential here, so looking forward to what's next. But anyway, that is going to do it for this video, so thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.